Ammo is crazy expensive and hard to find, and dry fire is life. I use the Mantis X10 to keep my handgun skills strong, and it makes dry practice fun and challenging. Check it out at the link below. Hey guys, Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. This is Active Self-Protection Extra, and this is Mantis Dry Fire Monday. Uh, I've been on the road a lot teaching, and I've been noticing a trend and a habit, and it's something that I wanted to address in a video for you guys that will help your dry fire and your live fire tremendously. Um, oftentimes we get corrections from a coach and we don't know what to do with them. Um, they're what we call beta instructions or beta commands. Uh, we see it in a fight game a lot. It's like telling somebody to keep their hands up. Um, when do I keep my hands up? Am I keeping my hands up too late? Am I putting them up too soon and dropping them? Am I reacting to a fake? Are they not quite high enough? Are they too high? Is something askew or my hands too far apart? You know, so that's not really a coaching instruction. It is an instruction, but it's open-ended. So therefore it's a beta instruction and it allows a lot of interpretation from the student. If we give an alpha command, we say is, whenever you see the front foot slide towards you, I want you to put both hands in front of the cheekbones and I want them to be equally spaced apart. I also want you to rotate to your right side away from the punch. It's a very specific set of commands. Now I've got to practice with the athlete. He's got to get better at that. And once he gets good at it, we'll start doing it at speed. We'll see how it works. We'll make some adjustments because nothing's ever given from the first instruction. And then we really improve. So you can see what an alpha level coaching command is compared to a beta instruction. The one I hear a lot is we don't get our support hand on the gun. I got to tell you, gripping the gun is almost the primary fundamental. Uh, if you take follow through or processing out of it, getting a good grip on the gun is almost everything. It can overcome uh, poor sight placement and, and poor trigger press because you're going to hold the gun and essentially still. Um, but what people say is you're not getting your hand on the gun soon enough. So get your hand on it on the gun sooner. And then we think, well, what the hell does that mean? How do I get my hand on the gun sooner? At what point? Because especially in the draw stroke, we have a lot of things going on. The other thing I hear a lot from coaches is the most missed shots are the first one from the draw and the first one from the reload. Now, is that truth or is it programming? Are you programming everybody to miss? Because not everybody misses on the draw, so it can't be truth. And not everybody misses on the reload, so it's still not truth. But if you tell a bunch of people that you're going to miss on the draw and the reload, for some of them, you're gonna give them permission to do so. For some of them, you're gonna program them forever. So we got to be careful what we say. What I'm going to do is give you a micro drill. A micro drill is to work on one aspect alone, a very small sequence, and then we have to put it back in the flow because we don't put it back in the flow, it'll create a hitch in our technique. So we're going to work on today is getting our hand on the gun as soon as possible. All right. And it's really important for us to do that. Every time this hand is off the gun, we have to rebuild the grip. So during the draw, I'm rebuilding the grip. During the reload, I'm rebuilding the grip because it's not on the gun. So I like the word rebuild because I need to put it back together or I need to build the grip. Either one of those works really good for me. Uh, so let's see what this looks like. What I'm gonna talk to you guys about is where we can micro drill. Let's make sure this gun is empty, all right? Physically and visually verified. You guys help me out at home, fantastic. So if I say get your hand on the gun sooner, what I see on the range a lot is this. The hand comes into play almost at the end. So whatever aiming or sight picked up or whatever trigger manipulation you're doing is utterly ruined by the slap that's coming in from the support side. So we need some way to get the hand on the gun sooner, but where does it come on? Well, we know theoretically we'd like it to come on right there. All right. But when we get going really fast in high speed film, and I watch a lot of people on, on video, what we tend to see is it doesn't quite happen there. It starts to be, build from there. So we need to practice a drill that gets us with the hand on the gun sooner and also allows us to feel what it feels like because what most people are doing is just looking at their sights, but we should feel the hands locked together and that gives us our kinesthetic index and then we're ready to shoot. So little drill from here, I'm gonna clear the cover garment. All you guys out there defeating the cover garment, just get it out of the way. I don't want that to be part of this, okay? Hands on the gun already. We're gonna practice this as quickly and rapidly as we can. We're gonna build the grip. So both hands are on the gun. You notice I've rotated my hand up and over and down and the other thumb is locking together. So I've got a really good grip here. And that means on the way out, I can see the sights, I can prep the trigger. And the moment I see that dot, I can be ready to shoot, okay? That's what I'm gonna see on the way out. So I'm building the grip right here. You don't have to rotate your hand way out. It just comes in from where it's grabbing the shirt 
and it begins to build and rotate the grip right here. So let's time that. I put 0.5 on the timer. So what I wanna do is be out of the holster and hands together by the 0.5. That's my micro drill. Okay, just about made it. You guys uh, probably couldn't hear that because I got it set on low. So let's set that up just a little bit higher so you guys can hear. All right, let's look at the drill again. So you can see, that's me getting my hand on the gun sooner. Finger's not on the trigger. The sights are coming to the target, but I'm getting the other hand on the gun sooner. And that's, if I said that to you in class, that's what I'd want you to do. Let's look at it one more time. I'm gonna bounce the gun. I'm gonna put a little pressure in it so it comes out of the holster faster. If I just hold it and try to pluck it, it's not as good. What I do is little bounce and come right out like I'm bouncing a ball. So I'm making a pretty good grip there. I've built a pretty good grip. Now, I don't wanna just keep practicing there. So I know from out of the holster, hands together is a 0.5. Could I clear it and get the hands together? So let's see if, if we can defeat the cover garment. I like to make fun of that. It's my thing, all right? If I can get the shirt out of the way, it's just in the way, and get my hand on the gun and get the grip together by 0.5. That's gonna be a bit of a stretch, but that would give me what? Another 0.5 to aim or 0.3 to aim, clean up the sights, and prep the trigger. I don't think I made that, but I'm pressing. So let's see if we can do a little bit more. Not there, but I'm getting a good grip on the gun. So maybe for me in drilling, that'd be more of a 0.6, all right? And then I have a 0.3 out there, which on demand 0.9s are pretty easy for me to do. Now I'm gonna practice all the way out. I'm gonna get the whole thing together and make sure that I'm really feeling that, that hand build the grip. It should rotate together. It's not rotating away from me. It's rotating into the other hand so they link together. I wanna to feel a mountain climber's grip on my other knuckles as I do it. So when I get to here, I'm gonna keep the gun moving and back. Now I'm gonna do it with clearing the cover garment. And just smoothing the stop out. Little hitch there, let's clean it up just a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now if my grip is correct, that means my red dot is going to end, come right into that target from the 12 o'clock position. If I've got equal forces here, and my body is pointing towards the target, my hips, my knees, my feet, everything's pointing that way, my force should be equal and I'm gonna point right to the target. Now, how would I practice this and make sure it's working well? The sights are gonna tell me each time. So as I'm doing a dry practice and I press the trigger, what I'm gonna look for is movement in that front sight. So as soon as I get here, if I built a good grip, should be nothing. No bounce, no movement, nothing like that. Now with a striker fire gun, you get a little ding from the striker itself, but, it didn't move at all. So I've built a really good grip now. Got a fantastic grip going on. But as I go faster, I may not get the grip I want. So what I've got to make sure is it doesn't fall apart as I add a little bit of speed to it. So that was a pretty good one. Now, if I'm going to practice this for real, recoil is going to show me if I have the support hand grip that I need and also the accuracy when I press the trigger. So what I'm going to do is shoot controlled pairs or doubles. Okay, I don't call them double taps, there's almost a, people don't aim, they just press the trigger twice. What I'm gonna do is see something each time. I can shoot either from reactive or proactive. So if I have built a good grip here and it is proactive, I know the dot's gonna drop in from 12 as it comes to the center of the target, I press the trigger, it's going to rise as soon as it starts to sink, I'll press the trigger again. Reactive means you probably don't have a great grip. What happens is you shoot, it comes up, comes down, it settles, and then you fix it visually. Always use both systems. Make sure you're using your feeling and your sight of a building a good grip. It should come back to the same spot each time. So I'm gonna shoot a couple of these so we can see. Uh, we'll see what the time looks like on them. All 
Okay. All right, eyes and ears, and working. Okay, so the goal is two good shots in a predictive manner. As the red dot or the front sight settles, I should be ready to shoot again if I built a good grip. So I have a bit of information. My first shot was solidly in the middle. Second shot's a little off to the right. What I'm gonna do is turn my hip and I'm gonna make sure that I engage uh, my dominant, my primary hand too. So let's see what that looks like. So uh, not smoking fast, a 120 draw with a 27 split. So we'll go a little quicker this time. Let's make sure we're bound to the target. All right, stand by. So this time I've fixed the right side. I drove straight up in the middle and it came a little bit left. All right. Of course, the speed picked up a little bit. It was a 98 draw with a 23 split. So for a 121, two shots, they're all good hits. I've actually made a little square on the target now. So now I'm going to push a little bit more and see if I've really built this grip during speed and see how my hands are coming together. So one more round of this. Find myself to the target. Visualize what I'm about to see. Take a deep breath. Exhale and be ready to go. Okay, significantly faster, uh, 116 total, so a 95 and a 20 split, which is about my speed. Good hits. It did go a little bit to the left side, so then I know something, that I need to get my left hand just a little more involved rolling that grip. Uh, as I pick up speed, it tends to get there later, so I'll go back to the micro drill, and I'll work it a little bit more like we did before, and practice getting that grip and get the feeling of that grip at the same time. And then I go back to shooting and work on my controlled pairs. And I'm watching the sights. They're telling me if I'm doing a good job. Uh, and that gives me a good idea of how that works. I can watch the sights go up and down. So your iron sights just should lift straight or your red dot should lift straight. What I see is a little bit of movement uh, one way or another. It gives me a great diagnostic tool to fix my grip. So I'm using a visual method to fix a kinesthetic uh, methodology. So kind of hopefully that'll help you guys a lot. Uh, you got to get your hand on it sooner. Drill from here to here and start building that grip as soon as possible. It'll get over a lot of your shooting flaws. Of course, I know all of you want to see the target. First two here, second two here, and the last two here. You know, I'm starting to dial in, but this is all great hits. Uh, I'm doing it under, you know, uh, a minute and a quarter, two hits for the first from a draw from concealment. So that's a pretty good thing. And I'm really getting a feel for my grip and I'm getting some feedback. Not when I just think I'm a good, I have a good grip, but when I'm shooting, do I have a good grip? Remember, most people are constantly putting their hand back on the gun. It means they don't build a good grip. Build a grip from the beginning. Have the grip that you want. Your hand should never come off the other one if you've built a good grip and you're using that locking together method. All right, guys, I hope that helps you. A little micro drill from here to here, building the grip. Support hand will cure most of your woes as a shooter. Low and left, to up and down, all that stuff can be really cured in your gripping of the hands and the floor and the gun properly. All right, remember to subscribe, Active Self Protection Extra. Watch the main channel, Active Self Protection. Uh, thank Manus X for doing this. Uh, your Manus can help you with your grip because it's going to show you how you press the trigger and give you a scoring and you're going to be able to get on that graph and watch what's happening right there. If you really start getting in simpatico with that graph, you'll start seeing how much this hand affects its movement. We'll never stop the sights from moving, but we can improve them and we can make sure that we understand that they're gonna move in a predictive manner, therefore we're living in the future. Instead of a reactive manner, we're trying to address the past mistake. Thanks a lot, guys, and as always, measure, refine, and perform.